A four to five hour drive from Los Angeles and San Francisco, and just over an hour's drive from Fresno, are California's Sequoia and Kings Canyon National Parks. Established in 1890, Sequoia National Park is named after one of the largest tree species on the planet and is home to one of the USA's highest peaks. Neighboring Kings Canyon lays just to the north, plunging 2,000 feet deeper into the earth than Arizona's Grand Canyon. Yet, despite their differences, these parks share much in common. Their valleys have been shaped by the snow-fed cascades of the central Sierra Nevada, while from their soils rise giant sequoias, some of which first put down roots 3,000 years ago, long before the rise of the Roman Empire. Sequoia and Kings Canyon National Parks are living timelines that remind us that we have small parts in a story far greater than our own. After passing Sequoia's iconic entrance sign, follow Route 198 through the park's sunlit foothills into the dappled shadows of its conifer zone. Pull over at Tunnel Rock, where generations of motorists left their mark before the road was rerouted in 1997. Four miles on at Hospital Rock, see the marks of even earlier travelers, the Potwisha people, who for centuries used this healing place as a winter encampment. Follow the hairpins ever upwards for another eight miles. Then turn left and follow the gentle melody of Yucca Creek into the depths of Crystal Cave. Discovered by two park employees while on a fishing trip in 1918, these marble caves have been shaped and polished by snowmelt for over 100,000 years. After exploring the park's subterranean worlds, turn your gaze skyward at the Four Guardsmen, a grove of thousand-year-old sequoias. But these are mere adolescents compared to what lays just beyond in the giant forest. Call into the giant forest museum to learn more about the sequoia tree named after the Cherokee scholar who created the first alphabet for his people and inspired the creation of writing systems for pre-literate languages all over the world. Which is somewhat ironic, for as you walk beneath the 8,000 sequoias of the giant forest, chances are you'll be lost for words. From the museum, take the Big Trees Trail, a wheelchair-friendly circuit where you'll find favorites such as Ed by Ned, twin sequoias whose combined footprint is as large as a swimming pool. Two miles on from the museum, pay your respects to one of the park's elder statesmen, General Sherman which rockets 16 stories into the sky and contains as much wood as an average 20-acre pine forest. After straining your neck muscles looking up at one of the world's largest living beings, take the 10-minute drive to Morrow Rock. Climb the 400 steps up the bald granite dome which juts from the mountainside. To the west, look down on Route 198, which zigzags up from the valley floor. To the east, 
Gaze out to the peaks of the Great Western Divide, piercing the clouds at over 13,000 feet. While to the north, feel the call of even more adventure from King's Canyon. Just an hour's drive from Morrow Rock is Grant Grove Village, the sole gateway to Kings Canyon National Park. After learning more about the park's human and natural history at the visitor center, explore the General Grant Tree Trail. Peer into the fallen monarch, used by the U.S. Cavalry a century ago to stable horses, and Gamlin Cabin, the oldest remaining structure in the park. Then, stand before the General Grant, the world's second largest tree. Declared the nation's Christmas tree by President Coolidge in 1926, and a living shrine to those lost in war by President Eisenhower in 1956, the roots of this giant run deep into America's consciousness. After bathing in the forest fragrances at Grant Cove, buckle up and hit the Kings Canyon Scenic Byway. Open from May to October, this incredible road snakes its way eastward, high above the Kings River. As the road descends and your grip on the steering wheel relaxes, Take a breather by the cool mists of Grizzly Falls and Roaring River Falls. After 30 wild, rocky miles, the road nears its end, delivering you into the lush valley floor at Zumwalt Meadow. Wander the boardwalk around this picture-perfect Sierra meadow filled with wildflowers, berries, and birdsong as the near-vertical granite giants, North Dome and Grand Sentinel, fill the sky. the vastness of Zumwalt Meadow or the giant sequoias which reach toward the heavens. No photograph, no video, no words can fully capture the sheer scale and spirit of Sequoia and Kings Canyon National Parks. This is a place that defies the limits of lens and language. A place where, as John Muir wrote, the snow melts into music and between every two trees is a door leading to a new life. The only way to experience this place is to step through that door yourself. We see Steph taking off on a nice looking wave. Taking off on one of her magic boards as well. Straight up into the lip for the first section for Gilmore. Races around and engages with the second. Wave is looking good so far for her as she wraps it around and gets that punch towards the finish. Now hoping this wave will stand up for something done. I love those. Unfortunately, that wave just had nothing on the inside as we see Steph here at the back. Steph, 
looking for a score to move up into the lead. Nice snap under the lip to start. Great second turn. Now lining it up through the inside for that third wider wrap on her forehand carve. And she snaps through for the finish. She won't be able to find that projection out. <laughs> the ISA event last year and I just fell in love with this place. Muchas gracias Punta Roca and El Salvador. It's, it's really special. Thank you for letting us ride your waves and, and welcoming us so well. Um, yeah, I'm so happy to be here and to win is just a cherry on top. So that's always the goal. Um, I'd love to win another title, but uh, yeah, it's a, it's a long road for sure. And there's a lot more uh, competition to be surfed and to be, uh, you know, a lot of hard work to do. but. I'm just feeling so good. Uh, this is an amazing, amazing experience. I'm so happy to be here and to win is best feeling ever. So cool. Thanks for your time stepping in. Congratulations, damas y caballeros, Stephanie Gilmore. You said dropping lands, huge moment in her career. She, we take her, take, see her taking off. She's been a little more active in this heat than Steph Gilmore. Finds a first good turn, gets that drift in the tail. Nice snap off the lip. And now driving down, working her way, keeping that flow in her surfing, regardless of the bump on the face of this wave, smashes that last turn and puts it in for a clean finish. <laughs> how close it was between himself and Jack Robinson when we got here to Punta Roca. So he covers some ground there. Tail high reverse quickly for Cola Pinto under priority. Flowing into a wrapping cutback. He needs a 7.01. Big front side oh. punt. Throws down the reverse. And <laughs> Uh, it means everything. I mean, Philippe's the best in the world right now, and he could pretty much do everything in the book. So to, to have the final with him and ended up getting in the last two minutes, it's what I dream of in my dreams. So just really happy to be here in Punta Roca, and everyone's so cool and friendly. Uh, just brings back a lot of good memories from when I was a child. Yeah, it was super tricky. Uh, in my heat against Jordy yesterday, the wind was like blowing super onshore, and it was really hard to find a good wave. So that was probably the most like difficult strategy type of heat. But then the heat with Kanoa, the waves just went as good as they get. So that was nice to be able to just go toe to toe with him. And we've had a pretty crazy rivalry our whole life. And uh, I think we're about even now. So that's going to be a fun one. Three nine on this wave to go right into first. He's got that stall. He wants to ramp up. Clear for takeoff. Full <laughs> rotation. Seamless on the landing. Right into a wrapping cutback. Now Toledo ramping up again. Big section. Throw tail You're reverse wow. complete. <laughs> To 
Toledo's going to roll in again. Already has a ton of speed. Driving off the bottom. Full rotation. Wrapping cutback to already combo it up. Nice driving forehand hook. Felipe once more taps that inside section. Forced to wrap one more time. Running through the inside corner with a roundhouse. Tail into this wave, almost complete. He'll just slap the reverse quick. All right, and now a couple questions with the runner up. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, your runner up, Felipe Toledo.
What does the Trekkensberg mean to me? Well, in a word, it's widescreen. It's a, a cinematic landscape. It stretches from horizon to horizon. It's just huge. The mountains here are very distinctive. Their jagged peaks just pierce the horizon, and instantly you know you're in the Trackensburg because no other mountains in the world look like this. Everywhere you look, there's a great shot. The plant and animal life is amazing. I've just been stunned by the variety of birds, and there's such a sense of tranquility. It's just beautiful. The landscape seems untouched, but you look and there's rock art everywhere. It really makes me feel connected to the people who have lived here thousands and thousands of years before. But I think it's those wide open skies of the Trackensburg that will stay with me. That's what I'm going to remember. June 20th, 1893. Some folks say she didn't do it, and others say of course she did. They all agree Miss Lizzie B was a problem kind of kid. A jury finds Lizzie Borden innocent of murdering her father and stepmother with an axe at their home in Fall River, Massachusetts. The grisly killings and Borden's trial received massive media attention for its time in the United States. 1837. In London, Britain's Queen Victoria begins her record reign of 63 years, following the death of her uncle, King William IV. 1943. Race-related rioting erupts in Detroit, a sign of unrest on America's home front during World War II. Federal troops are sent in two days later to quell the violence, which leaves more than 30 people dead. 1967. In Houston, boxer Muhammad Ali is convicted of violating selective service laws by refusing to be drafted during the Vietnam War. The U.S. Supreme Court ultimately overturns Ali's conviction. Already stripped of his title, Ali is allowed to return to boxing more than three years later. And 1975. Jaws, Steven Spielberg's movie about the terrifying great white shark is released. The monster box office hit is widely considered to be the film that launched the Hollywood blockbuster. Today in History, June 20th, Camille Bohannon, The Associated Press. Welcome back in our studio and in today's news, 